So let's go ahead and take a look at the homeworks here. Just to make it easier, I'm just going to go ahead and have the answers. So assume the random variable x is normally distributed. What you have to look here is it is normally distributed, not standard normal. How do I know? Because I have a mean that is not 0 and standard deviation that is not 1. And what are they asking me to do? They're asking me to find the probability. So they asked me to find probability of x less than 82. The mean is given. Standard deviation is given. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and open StatCrunch. I will go to Stats, Calculators, and all the way down to Normal Calculator. Let me go ahead and minimize it. So we have two screens here. Remember, your mean is, uh, let me see which way is better. You know what, let's just put it this way. Your mean is 90 and standard deviation is 5. So make sure that matches. My mean is 90 and my standard deviation is 5. That's my first step. What are they asking me? X is less than 82. So they're asking me X is less than 82. And then I compute. So when you see that, I get the exact same answer. So remember, this box gives you probability, and this box is your reference value. Okay, so let's look at the next one. The next one is greater than, so you do the exact same thing with greater than sign. And the one after is in between, so let's go ahead and do that. So when it says in between, where do I go? In between tab. And then, so they're telling me the mean value of x is 88 and the standard deviation is 4. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to make sure your mean value and the standard deviation matches. So technically, they're asking you area under the curve, which is again the probability, which is also your percentage. So I'm going to change it to 76. And this is 82. Make sure I check and cross check one more time. 88, 4, and then compute. Voila. I have, there you go, wrong answer. So I'm going to go ahead and change my mean as 88. There you go. 88, 76. There you go. Now you see. So you see how important it is to check and cross check? Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. Okay, uh, should I do this one or let me do the next one? I like the next one better. So the first thing you're going to go ahead and see how you can use the area under the curve in everyday problems. So let's go ahead and read this problem first. The amount of time per workout an athlete uses a stair climber are normally distributed. So I know it's a normal curve. The mean is 25, standard deviation is 5. Okay, very good. So the athlete, on the average, he takes 25 minutes with a standard deviation of 5 minutes. So that means somebody take 25 plus 5, which is 30. Somebody takes 25 plus 5 plus 5, that is two standard deviations. Somebody takes 25 minus 5. So what's happening here is the mean is in the middle, and I have standard deviation, standard deviation. So that is, this is a 5, right? This is a 5, standard deviation. So if the mean is 25, someone can take 25 plus 5, which is 30, right? Or somebody can take another standard deviation, which is 35. Remember, usually we don't go past two standard deviations because that is normal. Beyond two is very uh, not usual, which is unusual. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what they're asking me. So this is find the probability that a randomly selected athlete, so from a bunch of athletes, you go ahead, you calculate how long they take, and you get the mean of 25, standard deviation of 5. So they're asking you, what is the probability that you pick an athlete and his speed is less than 20 minutes? So you know that's very less than the average. So what is um, the probability that his mean would be less than the average? That's one question. 
And the other one is, what's the probability that the mean would be between 25 and 34? So the mean would be somewhere 25. Okay, let me um, undo this one. I don't know if I can undo this. So 20, 25, which is 25 here, and going all the way up to 34. Remember, this is 35, so this would be 34. So what's the probability that, that, that you pick an athlete and his speed would be in this range? And the other one is, what's the probability you pick an athlete and his more than 40? So that's very unusual. So it's 40 is all the way here, three standard deviations. So even if you don't know, then the probability is very, very rare or, you know, very small that it's going to happen. Between 25 to 35, uh, it's between two standard deviations. So there's a good chance, right? So let's go ahead and see what the numbers say. So it's always very important to understand what the problem is saying. And then based on that, we go ahead and compute our calculations. First thing first, what did I ask you all to do? Plug in your mean and your standard deviation. So my mean is 25. Let me cross check my standard deviation, which is five minutes. And what are they asking me? So I should not be in the between tab. I should be in the standard tab. And they're asking me, what's the probability that the climber will have less than 20? So less than 20. Very good. So the probability is 1587. That's in decimal. If you take it in percentage, it's there's only 15.87% that you will find a person who is so fast in climbing the stairs, which is very reasonable, right? So let's go ahead and look at the next one. So they're asking me, what's the probability that you'll find between? When they say between, you click on between. Between what? Between 25 and 34. So yeah, that's pretty good. So that's pretty much half the area, so which is 46%. So you see that? The decimal is 4.4641, so pretty much 46%. The last one is, it's going to be more than, so not between, you go to standard. The first thing you have to do is first you have to change your sign. So change your sign to more than, that's the first thing, and then change your number. Always keep in mind, change your sign first and then your number. And you see it's 0.13%, that is very, very low which is very, un, you know, very unusual. And again, I repeat, what you'll have to do is first you have to change your sign and then plug in. I can show you what I mean by that. Let's say I put this um, less than, right? Less than and 40. And now if I change it to greater than, eh, probably it's working, but always make sure you change your sign first. Oh, yeah, look, change your sign first and then compute. Okay? All right. So let's see what the next problem is. Again, this is pretty much the same thing. You have your mean. Let me expand this one so you all can see. So they're telling you that uh, you randomly select a member. This is the SAT critical reading scores. The average score is 510, standard deviation of 119. So if you're above average, that means you're a good student. And if you're below average, you know, so universities usually look at your percentile percentage when they pick you. So what they're asking you here is, what's the probability you're between? So remember, it's between 200 and 375. So you'll do the same thing like we did in the previous problem. Okay, y'all can go ahead and do that. This is also the same thing. You have your mean standard deviation. Let's see, should I do this one or, yeah, I'll do, I'll do this one. So here, use the normal distribution of SAT critical reading scores for which the mean is 501 and standard deviation is 120. Very good. So as soon as I know that, I go ahead and plug in. My mean is 501. What was the standard deviation again? 120. Very good. What are they asking me? What percent of the SAT verbal scores are less than 650? Less than is less than sign, 650. So 
So they're asking me for the percentage, so don't give them the decimal, change it into percentage. So which is 89, you move your decimal two units right, which becomes 89 point two, oops, two eight. So 89.28 percentage of the people have SAT scores um, less than 650. That is, you know, because the average itself is 501. So definitely you're going to have 50% of them who are less than 501 and the other percentage also who are less than um, 650 here. Because see, so majority of them will be less than 650. Let's tackle the next one. What do they say? Um, if 1,000 students are taking, if 1,000 SAT verbal scores are randomly selected, how many, not percentage, how many would you expect to be greater than 525? So greater than 525. And I go ahead and compute. So what you see here is the percentage. They're not asking you for percentage. They're asking you how many. So to find how many, you simply take this and time with the number of students, which is times 1,000. Oops, 1,000, which gives you 421 when you round up. Remember, even if you, if you get 420, that was not a 20, 4, 20.7 you cannot have 0.7 scores so you will always round off to the next number which is 421 let's see what the next one is the next one is exactly like what you did here okay I will go ahead and delete this problem but you should be able to do the rest